Hello everyone. Uh, we are live on the Great Drams Facebook page. Just give me a few seconds to make sure everything's working uh, whilst you all log on and find your way. Um, should all be cool, he says. Right, let's see what Facebook wants to do today. Excellent. It doesn't want to connect. That is almost typical for these things at the minute. Um, despite having a completely different network than we've used in the past. Hey ho, um, let's just see what's happening with it now. Um, hopefully you've all had a good day, good week, maybe a good lockdown, who knows. Um, this, uh, this evening we're going to go through five great drams from the Great Drams Independently Bottled Whiskey range. And we're going to start with the Gurdon. So if you crack that guy open and uh, pour it into your first glass and I'll be with you momentarily once I know this is actually working. Oh, the joys of live transmission. Oh dear, oh dear. Right, I've just had a message saying it is working, although it definitely is not on my screen, which is massively unhelpful. Anyway, so uh, we are great trans, and we're an independently, uh, independent whiskey bottlers. Um, it's my wife and I in the company. Uh, it is just the two of us uh, who do all of this stuff. And what we do is hunt for unique and interesting casks from the world of whiskey and then mature them in a warehouse up in Scotland until they're at the absolute perfect flavour profile for us uh, to bottle. And so that's what we do, that's what we've been doing for a while. We also have griddrams.com, which is like an online uh, whiskey blog or online magazine of sorts. Um, they have got around 30,000 readers on there every month, which is really cool. Um, something's just loaded, so I will continue that little chat in a second. Um, and we've been doing this for a while. Um, part of what I do is actually consult with pretty much every producer in Scotland as well, uh, in Scotch whisky, on uh, building their brands, new product development, innovation pipelines, that kind of thing. So um, it's got a broad spectrum to what we do. And we host these awesome virtual whisky tastings. We also host virtual gin tastings, um, uh, with one of which we had last night. And we love what we do. We're very, very fortunate uh, to be able to love uh, love every working day really, even the ones based in spreadsheets and all of that. So, okay, we've got a number of you on here. That is awesome. Uh, hopefully everyone has found their way onto the right link, the right page, hopefully, and you received the email uh, earlier in the week with the details and the tasting map. Let me just turn the sound off. I don't need to hear myself. So, um, here we go. We're starting with the Gervin. It's an 11 year old single cask, single grain Scotch whiskey. Um, and all of our whiskies are only available from us. Uh, you literally, normally, in normal circumstances, without a virus around, you'd normally have to meet us at a, a whiskey show or, well, not a whiskey show, we don't really do them, but at a food and drink uh, festival, like a pub in the park type thing, or maker's markets in the northwest of England. Um, and then you can obviously buy. Uh, whiskies online. All of the ones we're trying tonight are available on the website. This one, there is only, I believe, um, six of the 20 CL bottles left and then it's done. And then we'll never ever have this in stock again. That's what we do with our single casts and all of our releases actually. We never repeat. So we don't do the exact same whiskey ever again. Um, it's part of our business model, it's part of what keeps us interested, keeps, hopefully keeps us interesting to you guys as well. Um, and so this Gervin has been a multi-award winner uh, for us, it's done very, very well uh, in its own right. Uh, 273 bottles were ever produced, it actually got double gold at the Great Taste Awards, let me hold that up for you so you can have a little butchers. Each one individually numbered as all of our uh, larger size bottles are. Um, Jim Murray, um, famed for his, uh, his, his whiskey bible, which is published every year with reviews on all the newest whiskies released that year around the world, actually awarded this 91.5 um, points out of 100, so 91.5% last year, uh, which blew us away. We were really, really chuffed with that. Um, and so much so we had a, a, 
a special graphic made for it for the website. Um, so yes, that's, that's how we do that. This one I always describe as being like drinking boozy butter. Really smooth, really easy drinking. Um, a whiskey that you can just go back to time and time again. Uh, so it's a single cask, so only the whiskey within that one barrel, that one cask, uh, was ever bottled and released. So hence, when it's gone, it is gone. Um, and so if I was going to nose it, the point actually on nosing and tasting whiskies, if you haven't done one of these before, um, I, I, I just kind of nose and go into it normally, but if we're doing it in a really uh, kind of semi-professional uh, uh, kind of setting, what I'll do is breathe, put a glass all the way to the bridge of your nose, breathe all the way out through your mouth, all the way in through your nose, and then breathe out again, and then have the smallest sip and just, just swallow it, forget about it, don't even think about it, and then go in for a second sip. What we're doing there is you've got to remember that your tongue is a muscle, your nose is a muscle as well. So by doing that, you're actually kind of alerting them to say, hey, the nose, you're going to have to think about some really interesting stuff right now. And um, palate and tongue, you're going to get some high ABV spirit thrown your way. So just wake the hell up and think about what you're, what you're experiencing. Hmm. So an 11-year-old single cast um, as I, I get lots of really nice boozy buttery notes, like butterscotch and buttercream. Um, a really juicy as well. I mean, there's a nice fruitiness there, a lovely vanilla note kind of wrapping around the whole thing. And it's something that, uh, a whiskey that I've enjoyed um, with soda as well, as in a highball, why not? Um, but that it's also one of those whiskies that's really approachable. Shouldn't give too much burn. It's 46.2% ABV uh, is the bottling strength, and it should be really calm and really smooth. I'm going to see if you guys have got any thoughts or comments and then we'll carry on. All right. Remember tonight, any kind of questions, any thoughts, any reactions, good, bad, positive, negative, whatever, put them in the comments and I'll do my absolute best to respond to everything. And what I can't respond to tonight whilst we're doing our tasting, I will endeavour to reply to you tomorrow morning as I scroll through them all and make sure I didn't miss any. Um, I really do do that every time, by the way. So, Matt Hurst, you love that bar. Thank you very much. It's my, my, my sample, or whiskey archive, really. Some awards and stuff here. Um, but the whiskey archive, it's actually 100 ml bottles of some of my favourite whiskies over the years. And you get towards the end of the bottle. I save the last 100 ml as a reference point so I can go back to them later. Um, or if I know that there's a second release, or hope there's a second release of it coming out, I can compare. It's real kind of whiskey geekery stuff, but it keeps me amused. Um, Mr. Bishop looking smart. Thank you very much. That's very, very kind. Um, happy Friday indeed, Alex. I hope you're having a good one. Great to see you involved. And Christian, you've made it from the bar. Well done, sir. Well done indeed. And I would just like to say a, uh, a quick shout out to Eddie, um, dad of Sophie. I uh, hope you're having a fantastic evening and hope you're going to enjoy the whiskies uh, on, on display, on, in your glass, on your glassware tonight. Um, yes, have a good one, sir. Have a good one. Good to have you on board. Hi, Tom, as well. You've now got a new icon up there saying top fan. Fantastic. Uh, excellent. Lots of happiness. Um, cool, cool, cool. So, ah, oh, Darren, enjoying the start to your birthday weekend. It's actually my birthday weekend as well. How cool is that? Um, I, I, I'm guessing yours is either tomorrow or Sunday. Mine happens to be Sunday. So I hope you have an absolute belter as well. Um, and I also hope I have a belter, which you know, I'm sure I will. My, my phenomenal wife uh, and business partner has been teasing me with things that's going to be happening uh, over the weekend from different foodstuffs to walks and, and uh, all of that kind of thing. So yes, let's hope, uh, hope you both have great birthdays. Cool. So... I hope we're all happy. Um, explaining a bit more about whiskey and how flavour develops um, just before we go in into the other whiskies. The, uh, so whiskey, every single whiskey on the planet is made from the same three ingredients, water, yeast, and a form of grain. So in Scotch, it's barley, malted barley, uh, to create single malt, or in grain like this one, and the next one, it's a mixture, it could be wheat, it could be corn, it could be barley. Um, they actually change up that, that recipe or mash bill every now and then. 
And then the fourth ingredient, which no one really kind of talks about officially, is time. Time in the barrel, time in the cask. That is crucial because you legally cannot call a whiskey a, Scot a, a spirit, so a high ABV spirit, a Scotch whiskey until it's three years old. And before that, you can only call it a spirit drink. And no one, no one wants to go to a bar and say, hey, can I have that spirit drink? You want to go and say, I want that whiskey. That's a much better way of uh, ordering a drink. Um, so that's a really big deal and a big thing to realise. So three is the absolute minimum. Uh, the first one you're trying tonight, 11 years old. So that's 11 years that has spent in a cask. Um, and a cask got its name from the term casket. Casket of spirit got shortened to cask over the years. Um, and so this was actually matured in a first fill uh, bourbon barrel, ex-bourbon barrel. Um, so it takes on that lovely kind of vanilla and oakiness as well as that buttery character which smooths off the spirit itself. Uh, grain whiskey, which whiskey is number one, the Gervin and number two, the Port Dundas are, are created on what we call column stills or Kofi stills using a, uh, a process called continuous distillation, um, which means that they're continually distilling. Uh, the stills themselves are like nine, ten stories high, massive things. Um, very industrial chic if you ever get to go to a, a, a grain distillery. There's only seven of them in Scotland, so there's not many about. And mostly their products and their produce actually gets put into blends. Uh, grain whiskey is the backbone of every single blended whiskey uh, on the planet. And it, they all contain a high proportion of, uh, of grain whiskey in there that's then topped up with malt, which we'll go into when we get on to whiskey number three. And these stills, literally, they run all day and all night. And they only get normally turned off for about a day a year for cleaning and maintenance. Um, but then when you think about single malt, which we'll have uh, with the Glen Tockers, which is whiskey number four tonight, um, that is on, in, done in batches, done on those gorgeous copper stills that you often see in documentaries or postcards that feature distilleries or, or on the front of my book, actually, which is hiding away back there. Uh, the book I wrote all about Scotch whiskey a couple of years ago. Um, so it's those kind of beautiful copper stills that we associate with whiskey. That's a single malt done in a batch process. Um, so single grain, really smooth typically, uh, and a lot more approachable as a spirit style. And it's why we start with the single grains, and then we go through in a certain order um, as flavor, flavor builds and develops um, through, uh, through the different releases. Right, let's see if you've got any more comments for me to make sure I catch up on. Right, so. Go really creamy and smooth, says Magdalene. Absolute this one, that creamy note for me is an absolute belter. Um, we have uh, nice, different to other grains, a chocolatey finish. I agree, there is a nice kind of chocolate note there. Although, wait till we get to whiskey number three tonight. The bitter chocolate note on there is an absolute stunner. Um, let's see. Uh, Graham says, Is it second fill wood? It's actually first fill, but I don't think it was as potent. Uh, as I normally would have expected from a first fill ex bourbon cast. Um, the uh, Port Dundas was also uh, in a, uh, an ex bourbon cast, and I believe that was second fill uh, for when we get there. Um, let's see. <laughs> Graham Stewart, can't join you tonight, uh, so we'll catch up with you later. Good to see the feed is working this week. Same here. Um, we have switched network, and it seems to hopefully, hopefully work. Uh, oh, thank you very much, Christian. Really good read, the book of yours. That's very kind, sir. Very kind. Um, excellent. So, that's the Gervin. Next, we're moving on to the Port Dundas. It's a 10-year-old single cask, single grain. i hold it up there. Um, hopefully, that will uh, suddenly go into focus and you'll be able to see it properly. Uh, if not, uh, high-res images are available on the website for you to have a look at. Um, this one bottled at 48.2% ABV, it's a 10 year old from a dead distillery. And what I mean by dead distillery is that the distillery no longer exists. There are no more bricks or stills or anything. Um, I believe, and I think it was Ken Lindsay told me that it's been turned into flats and a car park or something of that boring description, uh, which is a monumental shame. And it was torn down in 2010, I believe, or production stopped then, it was torn down the year after. Uh, but this is actually, this one was distilled in 2009. So one of the, the later batches from the distillery and matured for 10 years, so a full decade 
It was distilled on the 13th of October 2009, bottled on the 4th of February of this year. Um, and only 193 bottles ever produced um, from that cask of ours. Um, and I love this one because it is so, so creamy. It is uh, one of the creamiest whiskies I think I've tried, um, with a, a nice sweetness to it, but also a cut through of quite refreshing citrus notes, uh, which actually for me uh, makes it quite a nice lighter, more refreshing whiskey than some of the others. And on that, I should definitely point out that I say a lot um, the term for me when I'm talking about flavour profile. And I really try to make sure that I do say that near enough every time because we all experience flavour differently, every single one of us. Um, and there's what, 56 people currently watching this and me included 57 because I'm watching myself on the screen every now and then. And essentially, uh, we've all been on different journeys in our lives. You know, when we were allowed out of our houses, we, we used to visit different places, different countries try different foods. Some of us love spicy food, some of us love smoky food and cheese and all that kind of stuff. Some of us like more calm, muted, uh, plainer flavours. And then others of us love really smoky whiskies. Some of us prefer floral whiskies. And so our palates have been on monumentally different journeys. And so the reason I kind of really emphasise that is that what I get from a whisky flavour-wise will be different to you and will be different to the other 57 people watching uh, this right now. And that's a real, a really big thing to point out because there's no wrong answer. If you're detecting a flavor note, that's right because it's what you are detecting. As I said your nose is a muscle, it has memory, uh, muscle memory into it, as does your palate. And so for me, when I try whiskeys, don't get me wrong, I, I do. Most days I'm trying uh, samples and things, so you know, not the worst gig in the world. Um, but it's, you know, you're going through these things and the flavours send me to another place. And not, I don't always just describe it in a linear list of flavour profiles. Sometimes a whisky genuinely reminds me of a memory of when I was a kid or a place or being at the seaside in Bournemouth when I was growing up. Those kind of things um, are kind of trigger, memory triggers that come through flavour and smell. And that is something that I absolutely love about whisky. Um, and so another thing around that, just to finish off on that point, is when when you read on a bottle or a back of packaging, and um, you, you know you've got flavor profile, don't say, don't just believe that that's the only flavor in there. That is the kind of what you say sounds bad to say, but the average or the the commonality flavors within it, um, because that flavor profile will have come from the master blender, sometimes the master distiller, but often the master blender who then sends uh, in one, uh, so I, I also write copy for the packaging for some of the brands. Um, occasionally I get sent the details uh, of one, and there's one specific master blender who once sent me for one whiskey, a full two page of A4 on flavor notes. And I just, I didn't look at him, I was, it was over email. I was like, how am I gonna crunch this into six words for the back of packaging? So you have to go through and find commonalities and build almost buckets of flavours so it's understandable. Um, then it goes through the brand team, then it goes through legal to make sure you can say that stuff, then it comes back through the brand team, bounce to the design agency, who then say, ah, actually, we need to shave three millimetre off the left here, uh, can you take a word out? So what you're seeing on the pack is a good representation of the, the kind of big flavours, but not all the flavours. If you think about the Shivers 18 year old, for example, I think there's 27 key flavour notes in there. They're not all on the packaging but if you spend time with it, you can definitely get a load of them. So that's what I always try and convey uh, with the, within these whiskey tastings, because it is about spending time with it, thinking about it, and taking an interest. Similarly, if you don't want to do that, just drink it responsibly. Just drink it and enjoy it. My whole thing is, as long as you're smiling when you're drinking your whiskies, everyone is winning. The you are, whoever bought it for you, if it wasn't yourself is, the producer is, everyone is. So, cheers to that point. And on that note, I'm going to enjoy a little bit of Port Dundas while I breathe. Mm. Getting that creamy note, that really, really fresh citrusy note. Quite a good woody uh, note uh, coming through as well. I don't always get that when I try this whiskey, actually. But a nice fresh wood, uh, toasted wood, uh, comes through quite nicely uh, with this. Bottled at 48.2, so it can take a bit of water. Um, some people do prefer it with a little bit of water. What I would always say on that front 
is, especially when you're doing a tasting like this, try all of the neat first. And that's what I call, I don't know if anyone else does, but it's what I call distiller's intent um, or producer's intent. Because we bottle them at a certain ABV, at a certain time, at a certain flavour profile for a reason. Um, so you pour in your glass and immediately flood the thing. It kind of kills it a bit. But uh, in the romantic side of what I do. But uh, if you try neat first, then add water to taste, that is absolutely fine. And if you're adding water, feel free to add up to like 10%, even a bit more if you fancy it, depending on the size of the measure. Um, because that will release additional flavour notes and additional flavour compounds as well, which enhances the experience. Sometimes you can actually get two totally different experiences from one whiskey uh, by trying it neat and then with water. One thing I would probably say uh, from a personal perspective is I wouldn't add ice when you're having it like this, doing a tasting properly, um, because ice actually numbs your tongue um, and, and so you're not actually probably going to get all of the flavour that you can do from the whiskies you're trying. Okay, right, now let's see what you guys have got to say. Yes, Matt, nice with a few drops of water, absolutely. Uh, a couple of drops of water is opened out for Andy as well. Um, floral, absolutely. Alex, smashing. Cheers, mate. Um, water brought out more strawberry flavour, says Steve. Interesting. Very interesting note. I don't often get strawberry note, but when you do, it's, I mean, that's actually a delight. Um, yeah, Magdalena, it is totally different from the first one. And whilst it is a single grain, it's from a different distillery, different ethos behind it, different production uh, values and, and, and kind of operation behind it as well. Um, and it's been matured differently. So you all always get subtle differences um, between different uh, different whiskies. And just to reiterate, we are on Port Dundas. That is the second one. We have already done the Gervin 11-year-old single cask. So where are we at? Um, ba -ba -ba. Detecting woodiness reminds me a little of Balvenie. Interesting. Interesting. I do love a bit of Balvenie. Mm -hmm. um, is there a preferred type of water to add? Personally, I add just mineral water. I keep little bottles of it in the office. Um, but really, you know, there's not going to be a huge amount of difference. Um, I personally prefer to add still water. Some people add sparkling. Um, Christian once added soda uh, to a gin, so that was a bad idea. Um, but yeah, soda if you're making a highball, absolutely. Sparkling water is absolutely fine. But still, will probably bring out more of the flavour for what we're doing as a whiskey tasting. Um, oily, slight hint of uh, sulphur, says Christian, actually. Interesting. Raspberry ripple or strawberry twist seeds. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of you are finding it a little bit harsh. That's fair play. That's it. We, not all of us are going to love every single whiskey we try, and that's okay. Um, so, let's see what else. Uh, cool. So, one of the other things to point out is, um, if someone did email me about this, how lightly coloured our whiskies are and I need to stress that our whiskies are all all of them every single one we've ever released uh, released in natural color from the cask um, and also non-chill filtered and not to say that you know when brands add color normally on the blended side and the kind of mass uh, release single malts it's not really a bad thing it's actually quite positive for uh, whiskey drinkers or consumers and um, because it homogenizes how they look it doesn't change the flavor at all uh, I don't believe, and virtually no one believes it does. Um, it doesn't really change anything apart from meaning that if you walk up to a bar or a shop and there's two bottles next to each other, say of Johnny Walker Red Label, for example, one's lighter and one's darker, you're potentially going to think, oh, one of these is dodgy, but which one? Um, and so it actually came from that. People were confused by the same brand having different colours when on shelf, so we're sending vast volumes of whiskey back. And so, uh, so the Scotch Whiskey Association allowed um, E150C, um, food grade caramel colouring, to be added in very small quantities to not affect the flavour, but to harmonise the colour, um, just to make it make sense. And so there were fewer returns when they didn't need to be, because they're the same whiskey. Um, if you imagine two casks, um, uh, where the spirit was distilled on the same day, filled into the cask on the same day, uh, same type of cask, matured next to each other in a warehouse for the exact same amount of time. Um, when you draw samples from them, they could be totally different colours depending on how the spirit has interacted with that wood and how it's drawn flavour and colour from it. 
Uh, all of the colour in whiskey before the homogenization I mentioned, all of it, like ours and from most independent bottlers um, and most single, well, all single casks and stuff, um, it's all of the colour comes from the wood. It goes in a clear spirit and comes out a different colour. Um, so that's also something to bear in mind. Um, and always worth pointing out as well. So, uh, looking forward to comparing the blended cast to last year's Christmas, says Matt. That Christmas one was a belter, wasn't it? I actually sold out in about nine days, that one. It was crazy fast. Um, the more I've had of the Port Dundas, the more I like it, says Sean. Uh, the flavour settles and opens up. Absolutely, sometimes whiskey does need time uh, to kind of just get in there, let the oxygen kind of just chill that thing out and open it up. Um, so feel free to go back to it later as well. You don't have to finish all of your samples at, at the same time, like right now. You can come back to them later. Always feel free to do that. Hashtag drink responsibly. So, we're going to go on to the third one now. And seriously, any other questions or comments or anything, do just put them in there. As you can see, I do my, my absolute level best to keep up with them and respond to you where I can. Um, third one, we're actually going to go to blended cask number two. Uh, so those of you who are joining a little bit late, uh, we started on the Gervin, the 11-year-old single cask, single grain Scotch whiskey, uh, of which there's only a, a handful of 20 CLs left. The rest are all completely gone. And then it'll be an absolute setup. And then we went on to the Port Dundas, from a dead distillery, a silent distillery that doesn't exist anymore. Meaning that once that one is finished, once all the casks from that one are finished, there'll never be any more because they haven't been producing for 10 years and will never produce again. And actually interesting, well for me interesting, when I was offered that cask, it's one of very few where I don't ask, oh, can I have a sample first? Um, because the, the kind of kudos and enjoyment of buying a cask from a dead distillery massively outweighed anything. And so as soon as I saw that that was available, we had it. Um, I just wanted it. And so, so we did, which was kind of cool. Um, so moving on to the third whiskey now, blended cask, um, batch number two. Uh, batch might be a bit, uh, a bit of a misleading term because it's no, none of the components of this one are the same as the Christmas one. Totally different recipe, totally different whiskeys, um, totally different intent as well. Uh, so when I create blends for grape drams, I sit down and I write myself a flavour brief. So what do I want to achieve from this whiskey? What do I want the flavour profile to be? And then I, then I start thinking, going through the list of our inventory of casks. I start thinking, right, okay, so what, what kind of uh, cask do we have in that might work with this? And so for this one, I wanted a, a nice punchy grain. So I went with a 13-year-old uh, grain from the North British distillery. Um, you know, we didn't use a huge amount of grain in it, it's actually uh, malt heavy on the blend. Um, and so it's 13 year old North British, 11 year old uh, Glen Murray uh, from a first fill bourbon cask, and then the absolute piece de resistance, a seven year old um, from the Not Do distillery that's matured in a first fill Ruby Port Barrique, and it was off the charts good. Um, that's where pretty much all of the colour of this one. I don't know if you can see properly on there, but it's, a, it's almost rosé in colour um, when you see the bottle. I'll show you a bit more up close. Um, so only 250 of these ever produced. And again, we will not make another, another uh, round of the same thing. Um, but as you see on the label, it says seven years old, despite the components being 13, uh, 11, and seven years old respectively. And that is because, uh, by law, by Scotch Whiskey Association law, you can only put the age of the youngest component of a blend on the label. And that is um, that's a good thing. It means that no one gets uh, deceived, no one gets um, uh, kind of duped. Uh, it goes back to when, uh, when blenders would create a blend and put like a teaspoon of 25-year-old whiskey in it and call it a 25-year-old whiskey. Um, and now that's obviously really deceptive to consumers. So the, uh, the law stepped in and said, mm -mm -mm, not happening, has to be the youngest component. So always worth bearing in mind when you think of a single malt or a blended scotch, 
if they do declare the age on it, that's the age of the youngest component there. Um, and just a point as well, single malts are blends, but they're blends from one distillery with no grain components. Normally that shocks people quite a lot, that they are blends. Um, but yes. Uh, so we, we're very proud to put age statements on all of our bottles. We haven't had an instance yet where we haven't. Um, our smoky whiskey released last year uh, from the Ben React Distillery, uh, five years old, we put five on there. For us, age is just a number, um, but at the same time, the age for us really doesn't make a difference. It's the flavor and the story around it, which is what turns me on to a whiskey. And so that's what we hope to convey when talking about our stuff. Uh, so this one, my intent was to actually create a lighter whiskey than the Christmas one that was mentioned earlier, because uh, that was all about sherry notes and, and quite a, a winter warmer. Um, this one's more of a lighter spring summer whiskey, if you will. And with that, uh, we we used that 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 kind of that uh, not do cast to bring out a really lovely fruitiness, and the Glen Murray cast bring a really nice appley note and a beautiful vanilla note, and the uh, and the North British to amp up that vanilla smoothness to it as well, just kind of round everything off. Um, and then the not do cast also brought a beautiful bitter uh, dark chocolate to it as well. So. Let's see. Um, Eddie says, really surprised with the blended cask, uh, full of flavour. Absolutely, that's what I look to do with all of our releases, is create whiskies that have a um, hell of a lot of flavour, um, but at the same time are interesting in their own rights. Uh, this one's at 46.2 ABV as well. Um, on the nose for me, that berry note, that lovely kind of um, vanilla oaky note, owing to the Glen Murray especially coming through. And when creating this, I went through a hell of a lot of pilot whiskies. Uh, so when I create a blend, um, you do pilot whiskies in 100ml uh, sample bottles, similar, well, the exact same bottles to these guys, actually. Um, and, and then to create them, it all starts, so as I said, on a post-it note of my flavor, kind of desired flavor profile. Then that gets mapped onto a spreadsheet, frightfully dull, um, where I choose the different casks, put the cast details, and it tells me all the percentage implications down to the absolute milliliter that is needed for each uh, each component to go into it at the desired bottle count. Um, and it works out all the costs and all that kind of boring stuff. And so that epic spreadsheet happens. And so I type it all up on there, what I think the proportions are from the casks, create the pilot blend, leave it over the weekend or that roughly that amount of time to let the flavors settle, intertwine, harmonize, um, just briefly, just so you can kind of have a rough idea. And then if it's good, it progresses to the next stage. If it doesn't pass my kind of quality checks and flavor checks, then it's rejected. Um, and, and then I create more. And so with this one, which didn't happen last time actually, with this one, what happened was, um, I actually got through a load of pilots and I still wasn't happy. Um, and so, kept the North British cast, that that was con constant in all of the pilot blending. Um, but then the other two, sacked them off. Um, just said, no, they're not working, let's get different cast down. So different samples sent down and started working with it. And it was that second set of, uh, of casts I was using is where the knock and the Glen Murray came from, but the knock especially just changed the game in terms of the fruitiness um, and what it brought to the table. Um, so much so that that, that one cast in itself will be our next single cast release uh, towards the end of the year. That will be our next limited edition because I just fell in love with it. Um, a really beautiful, beautiful cast. Um, and so yeah, once we go through that process, then it scales up to larger bottles of sample sizing, leave them for slightly longer. And then once I'm definitely happy, that's when, well, we don't actually call, we email, but theoretically, we call the warehouse and say, um, hey, look, here's the proportions, here's the casks, make it so, go. And uh, that's as soon as that email is sent is when I begin to absolutely brick it that no one else is going to like it <laughs> or, or that it's not going to work or whatever. Um, so that's, that's where we go with that. So I said only 250 bottles of this one I ever made. Um, for those catching up, we're on blend number two, I have a seven year old, uh, which is the third whiskey of the evening. Um, and uh, yeah, available on the website if you so desire. Let's have a look. Warm and full-bodied nuts and apricots, uh, says Dan. Eddie, uh, can I have your job? Sadly not. 
um, to, as it's my company, that make it really quite hard for me to, to kind of operate. Um, but thanks for asking. Um, not a harsh dram at all, says Sean. Thank you very much. Very nice, says Jan. Chocolatey and nutty, says Christian. Absolutely. Uh, George, uh, worth the wait so far, Greg. The seven-year-old is great. Thank you so much. Very, very kind, sir. Um, let's see. Any other comments? Uh, is a oh, is a blended cask also known as a vatted malt? Asks Richard. Good question. Our fifth one this evening, the twelve-year-old, um, is actually a blended malt, which can be called a vatted malt. We'll get there in a little bit. So hold that hold that thought, and I will endeavour to um, uh, come back to it. Uh, sweet soft fruit says Graham. Nice to see you online, Mr. Crookshank. Hope you're doing well, sir. Um, Totally different with a teaspoon of water. Uh, smoother and, in my opinion, even better, says Eddie. Fantastic. Uh, Matt says, different league to mainstream blends. Oh, you're very kind. Very kind. Too kind, if anything, Matt. Thank you. Um, yeah, those fruit blasts coming through, red and black currants. Fruity, says Steve and Andrew. Um, absolutely. Cool. Um, well, that seems like it's getting some, some love, which is always nice. Um, Jade, I genuinely thought you with Seth Rogen. Um, I believe someone said that on one of our first uh, virtual whiskey tastings and I still didn't look up that photo to see, see what that was about. But I have actually had a bit of a mop chop um, over the last few days. My very patient wife has, has ridded me of my, uh, my kind of northward growing afro of quasi gingerness and has trimmed the beard to look marginally less like I'm sleeping outside. Um, so hopefully that's, that's been noticed. Um, superb. So, I, I haven't actually tried this one yet, but, I mean, tonight, obviously I've tried it. Yeah, I, I know, I'm massively biased because everything, every bottle's got my name on it and my signature on the back, my brand all over it, but I do love this. I think it's a really easy drinking, super smooth, super fruity um, blend. And it actually does work phenomenally well with soda, if you like highballs. Um, and with that, what we would always do is a tall glass uh, filled with ice, um, put a double measure of whiskey in it, and then stir it. Now, bear with me, this may sound excessive, uh, but as Christian well knows, there's a thought and theory behind this uh, emanating from Japan called Mizuwari, or twisted water. You stir the whiskey with the ice for about 75 seconds. And what that does is take the whiskey's temperature down to the same temperature, or similar temperature to the ice, so that when you add the soda, still stirring, you add the soda very slowly and stir it, it's going into a glass where the temperatures are all roughly the same, and that keeps the fizziness, keeps the effervescence, and makes the balance and the harmony within the drink work a lot better. So you keep stirring it, then top up with ice even more, and you've got one of the most refreshing drinks you've ever had. And you will thank me for that. Um, it is worth putting the time into your highballs, um, always, because uh, just if you're in a bar and say whiskey and soda, Dump the whiskey in, bit of ice, dump the soda in, bosh. You're actually not having the best possible experience you can of a whiskey and soda. It's going to be a phenomenal drink. Absolutely phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> David, ginger and you make great whiskey. Thank you. Are you sure you're not Scottish? I'm definitely not Scottish. I'm actually a lot of Irish. Irish and English. Um, it's mostly my beard that's ginger. My beard and my second born. Um, no, the, the mop is, is definitely brown. It's just a, it's a hair, yeah. Um, <laughs> and Christian, we thank you for your highball masterclass. Thank you very much. Um, cool. So, hopefully you're all enjoying those so far. Just to recap, we've gone through the Gervin, our, our most awarded whiskey to date. A single grain. We've then gone through the Port Down Das Dead Distillery single grain whiskey as well, um, which only 193 bottles were ever made. Uh, we've then gone through uh, the blend, um, we call it Blend 02, uh, or BO2 really, but Blend 02, the seven year old with that lovely uh, knock do uh, port cask influence, uh, bringing that chocolatey, fruity note through. Um, and so we're then going to go on to the Glen Tockers, and that is the next whiskey we're going to have. Glen Tockers, uh, single cask, single malt, Scotch whiskey. 
only 203 bottles ever produced, of which we have only about 12 left. Um, and this one, uh, interestingly, uh, we so we we deliberately don't uh, don't have our whiskey in many places. We are very controlling of it, and um, so that's why we keep all the stock uh, in our offsite warehouse. Um, but what we uh, what we also do is only really approach our favourite bars to stock it, and so some of those being uh, the Cask Tavern in Poynton, my favourite pub, my local boozer, um, just a mere. 150 stumbles from here. Um, and also uh, Bar Swift down in London, uh, Black Rock, uh, which is a phenomenal bar, world's best whiskey bar. Um, so not a bad endorsement, eh? And also Milroy's of Soho, which is one of the most historic and history uh, laden bars uh, of, of the UK, really, but mostly London. Um, and so Eddie down there and, uh, and the team, they've taken most of our releases to date. And they absolutely loved the Glen Tockers. And the only for comment, flavour comment I got back when, when they tried it was, Greg, dot, 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 this is creamy as, and the next word began with F. Um, and I can't say it because we're going to put this on YouTube and we don't need it to be censored because that would be a real pain in the hoop. Um, so, yeah, super creamy whiskey. Again, nice and fruity. 48.2 uh, ABV. So, again, it's got that higher ABV than the last one. Uh, so bear with it, and it can take a little bit of water. I wouldn't add too much water to this one for myself. But another totally different flavour profile coming your way. And there's the bottle, just so you can have a, a cheeky look at it. Pom -pom. There you go. So that juicy kind of green apple note um, and orchard fruit note as well um, is, is what I really like about it. Um, so on the nose... I'm also also getting the, that, that fruity note, absolutely that fruity blast, um, bit of a cream note, and then also uh, like those foam bananas you used to have uh, in cinemas and pick and mix and penny sweets when they probably a, when they were a penny. Uh, God knows how much they are now, probably about a pound and a half or something. Um, but that that kind of real blast of uh, of fruit in different forms. Maybe some pear in there as well. Definitely that apple note, wow. I might be kind of hypersensitive to this as my, my lovely wife Kirsty has been uh, baking some phenomenal apple crumbles over lockdown, but a kind of nutty, <laughs> apple crumbly note coming through. Absolutely love it. And a peach note just at the top there as I was finishing that. Oh yeah. Very nice. Okay, 48.2 ABV. Uh, so it's a 10 year old single cast single malt so like the first two single cast bottled just from that one barrel um, and this time it's single malt so it's distilled on those beautiful copper stills we talked about at the beginning and single malt uh, whiskey is made with malted barley uh, in batches and then it's all being filled into uh, the cask for it to mature through <clears throat> we predominantly uh, buy uh, first fill casks because we like the potency and it gives me a little bit more to work with when I'm creating different things or when I'm choosing when to bottle them. Uh, but ultimately, um, first of all, has always been our, our kind of choice. Um, and uh, for whatever reason, we, we just always seem to do that as well. Uh, so this one, uh, weirdly, is a second fill on the Rosso Sherry cast, um, if memory serves. I didn't write it on the label, which is really annoying. Um, so, uh, I managed to forget the, if it is, but my memory is telling me it was a second fill Oloroso sherry cask. So it's still getting uh, some of those fruity notes from the sherry cask, um, but it's a bit more muted. It hasn't taken on quite as much color as you would normally get from, from a sherry cask. Um, and yeah, this one's done very well for us. People have absolutely raved about it and in, enjoyed it uh, quite a lot. The Glen Tocca's Distillery, one of my favorites in Scotland actually, it is um, one of the last kind of near total manual uh, manually operated distilleries there in Speyside. And it's uh, where, I'm sure Mr. Cruikshank will correct me if I'm wrong on this, but where uh, where Perno actually send quite a number of, uh, oh shit, I suppose, send a number of their production teams and production personnel 
to uh, to learn how to operate a distillery properly um, and kind of get to grips with all the different technical nuances uh, that comes with a distillery and getting that gut feel for when the cuts need to be made in the spirit, for when certain things need to happen, to pull all the levers and do all of that kind of magical stuff um, that we all love about distilling. Um, and I massively miss about being in a distillery, like the smells of it, the heat from the stills, the selfies with the stills, all of that stuff. I miss it. Um, and so I've, I, when, I, when I finally got the chance to go to this uh, distillery, I, I leapt, genuinely leapt at the cho uh, chance um, and, and went and absolutely had a, had a blast. Uh, really, really cool. Good fun, actually. Right, let's see what you guys are saying. Um, okay. Uh, oh, Alan. Hi, Greg. Loving this. The best night I've had in a long time. Gwyn Tokers is lovely. Thank you very much, Alan. I'm glad we could share some drams virtually together. Um... So yes, we are on the Glen Tockers. Um, it appears a couple of people have an unlabeled bottle. That's bizarre, because uh, they are all labeled at the same time. So if that's happened, I do sincerely apologize. Um, it will be uh, the one that is not Gervin Port Dundas, uh, seven-year-old or 12-year-old. It'll be the other one. There you go. That's the answer to that. Um, I love the nose, but cannot identify it very smooth. This is Magdalena, this is so good. There's Daniel. Um, very fruity, yeah, couldn't agree more. Uh, third one is the best so far, that's the blend. Excellent, uh, interesting there, Stuart, very cool, very cool. Apple pie, Joe, totally with you. For me, it's the apple crumble, but pie for sure. Um, foam milk bottles, pick and mix, says Lucy. Hell yeah, love that note. Very, very cool. Um, those foam bananas on the second taste, yes. 80 gorgeous flavour again, and totally different with a small drop of water. Uh, struggling to decide which is best, superb selection so far, but well, there's still one more to go first, so bear with me. Uh, Murray says the first and fourth are, are winning for him. Honey taste, I can taste the banana, says Benjamin. Yes. Um, that's our favourite so far. Fruity fresh with a nice nose, says Andy. Uh, citrusy and dark spice. Interesting, what's dark spice? I like that. Um, lots of people say this is their favourite uh, so far too. Very cool. Um... Actually, a lot of you are saying this is your favourite so far. Awesome. Remember, there's currently only 12 bottles left, uh, all on the website right now. And I'm not just saying that, they really are. Um, and uh, yeah, then we have our traditional minute silence when they all go, and then we move on to the next. So, yeah, this one. Mm. Oh, I love it. Absolutely love it. And that kind of fruity tingle as well, now with a slightly higher ABV, oh, it really works for me. Mm -hmm. Really juicy actually, which I think amplifies that fruitiness, uh, the juicy kind of character that comes with it, uh, more so on the finish for me than, than, than what I was drinking, but yeah, I think that's uh, that's really, really useful way of characterising the, the fruit, it's been quite a juicy fruit, not necessarily a dry fruit. David says it brought a tobacco note when he added uh, water to it. Very interesting. Um, so, I'm going to move on to dram number five. Um, and this one's our latest release. It's also our oldest release to date, at 12 years old. Um, and it's in our blended cask series. Batch three, again, totally different recipe. Uh, so we need to work on our naming. Um, but this is a blended malt. So this one, blended malt, means it's a blend of just malt whiskies um, and no grain whiskey in there at all. Um, so once you've tried this one, by the way, everyone, tonight you'll have tried four totally different styles of whiskey. Single grain, blended scotch, single malt, and blended malt. So they are the four types of scotch whiskey. Um, and what we love about doing what we do is that A, Kirsty and I um, pick the casks uh, that we want to release and want to mature and want to have in our range. And then we also like doing things like this, which are a little bit different. You don't see too many blended malts out there. You also don't see too many single grains out there, really. Um, and so by doing that, we hopefully 
of broadening your uh, palates and your whiskey enjoyment and your whiskey experience as well um, as making it really fun for us. So that's, that's always very cool. Uh, so this one is at 46.2 again. So we've kind of gone 46.2, 48.2, 46.2, 48.2. So we kind of juggled up and down. Only 150 bottles of this one ever made. And all of the components within here uh, were matured in Oloroso sherry casks. So they're all sherry cask mature uh, components that went into the blended malt. And sadly, due to a, uh, uh, a, a kind of con contractual situation, we're not allowed to say which distilleries are in here. But if you were to happen upon the Google thing um, and wanted to understand the Beast of Dufton, might be something to look up. And, and to understand which distillery in Rothes is probably the most uh, well-known um, uh, as well, would be two of the lead components. Um, so for me, this is really well-rounded, lovely multi note, and that spicy and winter fruit uh, comes through as well. And we actually created this one specifically based on our consumer feed or our customer feedback. Um, as you guys got in touch with us and said, hey, look, we need more sherry casks in the range. After our Craig Ellicke, uh dearly departed, oh, dearly de oh, that's the Christmas blend, sorry, wrong one. Um, our dearly departed uh, Craig Ellicke, uh, release uh, was sold out. Um, so you wanted another sherry cask. So we listened and we answered. And so that's what we've, we've done here, is release this one. And as I said, only 150 bottles available when it was released. And it was released uh, two weeks into lockdown. So it hasn't had, had, its, uh, had its day as yet, unfortunately. We haven't been able to talk to people in, in real life instead of virtual life about it. And we haven't actually done a proper launch for it. Um, we used it in one other tasting, I believe. Um, and now here. So you guys are still amongst the the few who have actually tried this one, um, and I'd like to hear your opinions and your thoughts on it. But I'm going to have a quick nose. <sighs> Classic sherry note on the nose. It is, for me, it's all you want in a sherry whiskey, that kind of dryness, even on the nose comes through. The dryness, that spice, that kind of sherry oak note, as well as the fruit, just building and building with each nose. muted, chilled out spice as well. It's not necessarily a slap in the chops. It's very, very calm, very cool, very collected. Mm. And on the palate, the gorgeous uh, spice and, and kind of winter fruit note wrapped in a slight sweetness, almost like a licorice note as well then. And a tobacco note. It's been really classic. Um, uh, sherry cast matured uh, whiskey and blended malt. Um, I, again, I'm massively biased, but I do, do deeply love this whiskey. Mm -hmm. I see what you guys are saying. If you're asking me about distilleries, I cannot answer with a straight answer, just so you know. So, where are we at? Um, okay. Getting aniseed on the aftertaste. That's flipping good, says Sean. Excellent, thank you. Um, uh, Christian, four different whiskey types, all in one night. This is what I like. Your knowledge is mesmerizing great. Oh, thank you, sir. You're very, very kind. Very, very kind. Sherry Bomber, says Matt. Absolutely. Uh, so good again, says Daniel. I get cherry and a little bit of smokiness. Sometimes people do get a bit of smoke with, uh, with sherry cast matured whiskies. Um, it's actually sometimes slightly sulfury as well, depending on your, your, your palate's susceptible, susceptibility to picking that up, uh, owing to the sulfur candles that are used to, uh, to char uh, the oak when it's made over in Jerez. Uh, definitely my favorite says Sean. Uh, chewy says Niall, no, that's a very good note. It is a very thick palate, isn't it? Uh, gonna be honest, too much smoke for me, mellows with a drop of water. George says the seven-year-old wins it, excellent stuff. Um, Surprise myself, says Ellie, and he says that the last one is his favourite. Very cool. Hint of chilli, says Richard. Interesting, there is definitely a spicy, spicy note there. Um, Andrew, sherry has enhanced and not overpowered it. Absolutely. Um, David, first and last are his favourites. 
Very sweet, a lovely dram. How long did it take? <laughs> Dan says, how long did it take to sellotape all of those bottles? A hell of a long time, a hell of a long time. Um, and we've now moved to a slightly different system. Um, still involves sellotape, but the uh, less bubble wrap, more pouch based, which is, is nice for me. Makes it marginally easier. Saves about three seconds per pack. Um, uh, love this, says Richard, but the uh, Glentokas was the winner. Um, good legs on the glass, awesome. Uh, say the best to last, says Andy, and I love a sherry cast that doesn't disappoint, says Steve. Great job on the last one, says Graham. Thank you very much, sir. Um, Stephen, what was the makeup again? All Speyside. All Speyside uh, malt whiskies matured in sherry casks. That was the makeup of this one. Nice and spicy. And yeah, so. Oh, I've just scrolled way beyond where I wanted to be. Um, so this one's getting a lot of interest as well. Always quite, always lovely to hear honest and instinctive reactions from people as well, and to understand your your flavour uh, uh, and notes that come with it. Because they you know, I sit here and, and do this, and Kirsty as well. It's the two of us does absolutely everything within the company, as I said right at the beginning. Um, and you know, some we obviously we pass samples out to. Uh, to a few people when we're releasing things, but we uh, we always love with some trepidation, I must must say, uh, hearing what your feedback is, um, because it's that feedback that then helps us shape what our next releases are as well. Um, as I said, with this one, it's a direct response to requests from our customers, our awesome, awesome customers. Um, so we do listen, we do react, and we do what we can to create interesting whiskies that are different, diverse. Uh, use different uh, styles of maturation and styles of distilling as well um, because you know, ultimately it keeps it interesting for me selfishly but hopefully it does, uh, does, does kind of strike a chord with you guys as well um, and we have uh, some amazing customers uh, who uh, most of which become really good friends um, because you know every, everything in whiskey is about talking about whiskey right so we end up talking about it all the time and even texting about it and just kind of thinking about it all the time which is great um, and so they were the five uh, from our range tasting uh, it sounds like you mostly have enjoyed it I hope you have um, and as I said all of them are available on the website and now I'm going to be here for a few minutes just looking through making sure any other questions are answered um, but do hit the website because we've got these bottles available we also have a Scotch Malt Whiskey Association, uh, sorry, Scotch Malt, Scotch Malt Whiskey Society uh, single cast tasting set, uh, which we'll be tasting through on the 24th of um, June. Uh, so we'll be doing last orders on that pretty soon, actually, uh, to hit the final shipping date. Uh, our Father's Day pack will ship, and the last time will be on Tuesday. So if you're looking for something for Dad, there you go, we've got it covered. And it includes three of the whiskies that you tried tonight and a limited edition uh, Great Drams Glen Cairn glass. Um, and what else have we got? We've got a new tasting happening on July the 1st, uh, which will go through some of what we tried tonight, as well as a cask sample from one of our casks that hasn't been released yet, and it's still a work in progress, and that's at cask strength at 55.9%. Um, and then on the 9th of July, we have a very, very super special uh, whiskey tasting which includes a 30-year-old whiskey uh, from a private cask owned by me. So uh, we'll, be, uh, we'll be going through that. So all of them available on the website. Make sure you do check them out um, and, uh, and get involved. We, I clearly love doing these things. I hope you can tell. <laughs> um, and we're going to hope to continue doing them. So thank you so much for your support. I'm going to have a quick check, see if there's any other uh, thoughts and questions before, before signing off. Uh, let's have a look. Um, oh, why does that keep happening? Let's scroll back up. Uh, brilliant night, some great whiskey, says Tom. Thank you very much, sir. Um, let's see. Uh, Christina, I love the way uh, you love your job. Had a great time and really enjoyed the education as well as the drink. Thank you very much. Thank you for taking the time to be with me tonight doing this. Uh, lovely selection. Uh, must try and not do sometimes. You really should, Matt. It's, it's exceptional. Um, uh, has to be an, Isle, an Isla whiskey in there. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, so we've got no Isla whiskies as yet. Hopefully by next week we will own an Isla cask, but we won't be releasing it for a while. But we're working on that and have been for a while. 
Benjamin has said, can we have a vote? I don't necessarily know how to do that on here. Um, can, can we have a vote? I don't know. Um, uh, I don't know how to do that. But if you want to vote with your comments and just put your number one and two, maybe, of whiskies that you enjoyed tonight, that's absolutely fine. A brilliant night, great selection, very informative, says Danny. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Brilliant evening. Thanks very much, says Graham. Thank you for taking the time as well. Um, let's see what else. Uh, three and five are the best for Barney. Um, come to Sudbury Whiskey Club when you can. When we're all allowed out, I, I, I want to go on tour, that's for sure. Uh, great night, thank you. Ah, oh, Rosie just ordered the Glen Tockers. Marvellous stuff. Uh, so that means there's 11 left at maximum. Interesting. Um, already booked the 24th, says Richard. Uh, thank you, great evening. Um, nice, definitely uh, nice to taste. No artificial colouring, thank you. Yep. Um, the, yep, the 12 blend is winning. Oh, lots of very, very positive things. Um, let's see. Oh, God, it's moving too fast for me to keep up. Oh, vote two, four, five. Uh, it's all about democracy, says Benjamin. Absolutely. Four and then five. Five and then four. Four. Four and five. Um, looking forward to the SMWS. Uh, let's see. <laughs> five and one. Is your house a coma site? Kind of I don't know what that necessarily means. With all that whiskey, uh, to be fair, it's, it's pretty much what you can see. Um, most of it's uh, actually um, uh, stored off site and it gets dispatched uh, remotely. But yeah, all very cool. So thank you guys all so, so much. And I really appreciate you taking the time to be with me uh, online on a Friday night trying some of our, uh, our limited edition whiskies. As I said, they're all available on the website. Get involved. And hopefully see you, at, or hopefully you see me, or me see you, whatever, at, uh, at one of the next tastings. I believe actually the July 1st and the July 9th are on Zoom. So it'll be uh, lots of people, videos and all that kind of thing. So we're doing a slightly different format just to mix it up a little bit. Um, but yeah, thank you again for taking the time for getting involved. Really, really does mean a lot. Uh, enjoy the rest of your night and enjoy your birthday if you have one. And enjoy the rest of your weekend as well. Cheers and good night. Now the awkward part where I walk behind the camera and hit stop.